All right. Uh, good morning. This is Songs You Own here on the radio. And as usual, I'm your host, Jenna. But as like a special show today. Special. I have my good, good friend, Kara, here. Hello. Who's going to co-host and share some awesome music with me. And we're going to talk about a really cool project that we're both involved in. Yeah. Called Red Alliances Media. So stay tuned. We're going to talk all about that project uh we're gonna play some good tunes and have a little chat so what do you have up first for us Karen? well first i have uh real live from keys and imc it's called it's from the album hand drums for whiskey bottles and it's very good i got it from albuquerque and i was i was very happy i was like just walking along the road with my best friend and there's this guy selling cds and my like i was with my chaperone because i was in the miss indian world pageant and i couldn't go anywhere without a chaperone really and then, so yeah this was just a couple of years ago right no it was like a few months ago like last and you had a chaperone March. yeah i had a chaperone <laughs> she's she's my age she's like my best friend my sister Shaz. and anyway so she had to like lead me around places because like people would always be like coming up to you and be like oh and you'd be like whoa and so um <laughs> but uh, like and so like crazy there was fans guy. yeah <laughs> yes it was nuts people were crazy about the pageant and so uh there was this guy selling cds and i was like oh, and i was like stopped out of my tracks i was so excited it was keys imc like one of my favorite mcs and then my friend was like no no we're not buying cds and i was like yes we are yes we are and so finally <laughs> i convinced her to take pictures and so this is one of the my best my favorite tracks on the on the song is it playing already nope there okay. you go <laughs> in our heart of hearts
remind ourselves always yeah. of this. It's not about inflicting pain on people. It is truly an opportunity to reconcile our differences. It is to remind people, for example, when we talk about some of the lies that we've been forced to live, that this country was not founded by the French or through the French or by and through the English people. This country is very much about the first people, the original people. So there we are with Katie. Uh, Keith, IMC. Keith, IMC. I yes. can't read it from yes. here. <laughs> it's Keith, like peace in ah, the Middle East. Yeah. Peace. <laughs> peace in the Middle East. Okay. Yeah, so Kara's just telling me a little more about Miss Indian World here, which is like, I don't know anything about. It I hadn't even heard of it of until I met Kara. Um, <laughs> so that's pretty cool. And Kara and I actually met through a project we're working on called Red Alliances Media, um, and it's a website put together by a group of Trent University students. I'm hoping to provide a safe space for Indigenous peoples and allies to participate in media production. So it's a little website that we've set up. It's redalliances.com if you want to check it out. And we've just set it up a few months ago as a way to sort of compile Indigenous and ally produced media and also promote the production and sharing of Indigenous produced media. So there's a few of us on there. You can check it out, who we are, and some of the cool stuff we have up there. It's uh, sort of in its beginning stages, I would yeah, say. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm really proud of the work we've done on it. And an interesting thing, since it is Thursday and the last episode of 8th Fire is yeah, on CBC tonight, tonight. 9 p.m., um, and all of us have been blogging about it while it's been going on. So you can check out there and get quite a few different takes on the series as you're watching it. Mm-hmm. It's very exciting, yeah. And look, we have some really new pretty headers up. And <laughs> yeah, it's so We've all exciting. been like, what, it, what does Heather say? Flexing our technological muscles with this Yeah. <laughs> I could Trying barely... to understand HTML and yeah, just kind of like, if you're like me, like I just kind of have been staring at it, like just trying to figure out how everything works. And <laughs> yeah, I could barely <laughs> use like Microsoft Word before we started doing this. I know, me too. <laughs> I'm barely competent with Excel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's been a learning experience for all of us, but we're really encouraging anybody else who wants to get involved, if you're involved with media production or passionate about Indigenous issues or you're involved with some sort of project or event sort of connected to those issues, you can go on there and let us know and like we can promote it through the site. Um, it's also a place for discussion. There's message boards and just a safe space for people to like explore these issues and these ideas exactly and like the thing i like about red alliances media is that like we're we're really focusing on the positive aspects of indigeneity you know like um we have some things on there from like adam beach and wab canoe and then they're very much they're, st they're straying away from like you know the negative images that have been portrayed about indigenous people in the media and so i feel like you know every time i get like a little discouraged or like you know reading reading an article or like looking on the news like I always think about like you know how passionate we were in our first meeting and like we all came to the table with basically like the same idea on how to like you know and to promote indigenous positive media and like you know and that's really meaningful like you know it shows that like you know even like in a small group of people like we can make a change in how people and view view like you know view your community view your culture and it's really positive I'm really excited about it and that's that's why we're both like, you know, both here today. I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it sort of came from eight people coming together. And in the beginning, it was talking a bit about the negative portrayal of Indigenous people and Indigenous issues in the media. And then extremely quickly, we all came to the conclusion that we wanted to do something positive in response, not really dwell on the negative side of things. And I think we've achieved that. I'm mm -hmm. really excited about it. Absolutely. Um, to keep things on a high note... Do you want to play? Yeah, let's, let's play. A Tribe Called Red? Yes, A Tribe Called Red. 10 a.m. dance party. That's what this mm -hmm. is all about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
they are to dog out if you put the whole iron on them. We can't live it on the peace card, the whole of them. In five of them, and them are cause problems. Chop it! Seattle police are investigating whether the shooting of a police car for John Hill 
Williams was justified, but in the minds of those who led a memorial tonight at the place he died, it's clear what happened. The Seattle police officer who shot and killed Native American woodcarver John T. Williams in August has turned in his gun and badge. Police sources tell 213 Fox News the department's firearms review board reached a preliminary finding that Officer Ian Burke was not justified in opening fire that day. Amy Allen has more. A woman crossing the street is visibly shaken by the shots. After the woman walks out of frame, we hear a female voice say something to the officer. It's garbled. It sounds like she's asking, what did you do that for? Officer Burke responds. Then he had a knife and he wouldn't drop it. Just kind of didn't seem right, you know. I understand that he got shot four times and it just, to me, it seemed a little excessive. One witness we spoke with said he never saw a knife, but the victim was not acting in a threatening way. He was murdered for no reason. This Disabled, he was he was deaf in one ear, and he never harmed his soul. But Williams supporters say the video proves that they believe that it was an unprovoked shooting by Carlos Wood Carver. I think that that this was a murder. Heaven just just this is done for John T. Williams. He had problems, but you know what? There was no reason to take a gun out and kill that man that way. There was no knife. I'm standing right there and I can see the dude. There's no knife. Hey! 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 Put the knife down! Put the knife down! Put the knife down! Fellow officers talked to Burke out of the camera's view. Hey, I'm all right. He had it open. I asked him to come to the local five. He's carving up that corner. On the tape, Burke never tells fellow officers he was afraid and never says Williams was threatening anyone. It Strong community reaction tonight from those who argue all along that John T. Williams should have never been killed. If you spent five minutes with this man, you would have never gotten any information that he was violent or could hurt you in, in any way. So there you go. We had Mumba Wow by... Tribe Called Red, followed up by Wood Carver. And that last song there, as most of you probably know or gathered from listening to the song, is actually about the shooting of John T. Williams in August 2010 in Seattle, who was a wood carver in downtown Seattle and was shot by a police officer actually in the back. Um, and it just sort of... I, I really like that song, and I think it's really interesting how something that is is so negative like a, a absolute tragedy can can be told in like such a diverse diverse number of ways you know what i mean like through mm-hmm. the newspaper and through news reports and then through techno music from tribe called red and i think that's really what at the heart of what we're trying to do with red alliances is there's many different ways to tell these stories and we're really interested in engaging with that so if you are involved in any sort of media, art project, positive indigenous or ally 
um, event, you can email us at Red Alliances, R E D A L L I A N. CES at gmail.com <laughs> and let us know like we're totally open to collaboration to bringing as many people as possible into this project and into this website yeah uh, that'd be great yeah and it's it's so interesting too because like I think that like something like this would be perfect because it's kind of like it's also kind of how you're re-engaging in the story and how like you know you're like taking back that story I think like a big part of like John T. Williams is that it's so like you know when you think about like you know the 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 human aspect of it like you know this was another person and like you know he was a deaf in one ear and he was a wood carver so that's like he had a knife on him and and that was like you know that was a part of his daily life is to like carry around like you know weaponry like that in order to do his trade and then so like you know and then he was like unjustly like murder or like not murder like you know and and take the story as you want it um and then that's like you know that's essentially what happened but uh, i think a really good th- great thing that a tribe called red does is like you know they reinterpret that story and and like you know like you it's a good song and you know you kind of feel bad for dancing like jenna was saying like, i almost <laughs> feel bad for dancing and i was like well like you know it's like it's like a story they wanted to tell a story and like you know they wouldn't have made it into a, like you know such a good song if they didn't want you to dance to it and you know and and like it's kind of like a way of of renaming you know your grief and and of like you know reinterpreting in so many different ways and so i think that that's a big part of red alliances media is that we want to take contemporary narratives and then like you know and discuss them in in different formats and i think that's something that could be really successful with us because like you know we're contemporary you know like young people and we just want to express our feelings and like you know there's like the modality of newspapers and books are like you know they're they're like you not 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 like you know necessarily like aged but they're like you know they're just limited in the ways that we can talk and as youth like you know we're reinterpreting narratives and so I think that you know that's kind of a big story like you know a big portion of what we want Red Alliance's media to to do. And I think that's a really good point about um, you know it's not necessarily a battle between newspaper versus web but as far as constantly reinterpreting and um, shifting your understanding of the issues and of these narratives is like that's the the amazing thing that I think the internet offers in a website such as this offers is there's room it's not a one way um, discussion you know we're not just putting information out there Mm -hmm. everything that's put out there you can answer back to and then somebody else can answer back to you and like it's that sort of discussion that I think is really productive absolutely especially like between indigenous peoples non-indigenous peoples allies people from different communities like and this is just a space to like get that conversation going because there's no need for these narratives to just sort of mm. be disseminated they can absolutely. be created like yeah. collaboratively and that's sort of our goal Mm-hmm. I was actually watching the news like um, a couple of weeks ago and it was I think it was on APTN news and um, so they were discussing like you know the amount of racism within the within like you know such popular formats and like you know the internet is such a is such a like you know way for people to express their racist opinions because like because it's anonymous essentially and mm-hmm. then so um, there was a guy on there and he was like well basically like you know he's from the CBC and he was a moderator and so every time he was like you know every time you you put a put a like article up on that regard that regards like first nations or aboriginal issues like you know you're always always going to get racist comments and then she and he's like you know like my only job is to like you know delete these comments and to moderate them and then i was like well like you know that that kind of like you know that's such a popular form of 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 internet and like you know that totally like you know i think what we're doing is like we're we're trying to you know act in a modality where like you know we can inhibit discussion as opposed to just um such like you know negative blasts about like you know about a group of people like we're we're trying to like open up the dialogue and yeah. trying to like you know like try to bridge an understanding and like forge relationships and so I, of- I often think about that because I'm a huge mm. fan of the CBC and yeah. I, I probably go on the website a couple times a day and of course I always have to scan to it's like a sick thing like I have to scan down and see the comments even though I know, I know. Yeah. I'm not gonna like what I see and I think there's something interesting there about the space and I think the CBC as much as like I respect it as um, a news outlet attracts those types of readers in a way and I think we're um, just hoping to like provide a space where the discussion can be a bit more positive Mm -hmm. Uh, mind you I, I don't doubt that 
the time may come when we need to moderate. And that's so, that's so interesting. Yeah. Like, what does moderating comments like that even mean? <laughs> How do you yeah. judge that? I don't know. Uh, some stuff we'll have to figure out. Um, uh, I don't know. It's it's weird because, like, you know, you can incorporate so much of your time around that, like, you know, moderating and kind of, like, bridging or, like, you know, bridging or, like, you know, walking along this politically correct path. And then it's it's it's, it's time consuming and you wish you didn't have to do it. And it's energy. It takes so much energy out of it. And so I don't know. That's what I think Red Alliances will do is, like, you know, to forge understanding so you don't have to do that anymore. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Good point. Let's, uh ponder that one while we listen to some more music what do you want to play i will play some kara's the expert in uh, uh indigenous into... music today oh i'm gonna play some more keys Woo-hoo! yeah this is a really great tune i listen to it when i'm running so i'm gonna start it right now
movement is happening and it feels good. It goes out to all my people. I'm a power chair, all my people on the conference trail, and all the youth I've ever spoken to. This is how we do the double beat round there. This is how we do the double beat round there. This is how we do the double beat round there. This is how we do the double beat round there. So right up there we had Robert Gladue with Best Bros. 
And it was really great because I went to just in last weekend, I went to Ottawa for a round dance and Robert, they flew in Robert Gladu all the way from Waterhouse, Saskatchewan. No way. It was really great. Yeah. And I also have uh, another song on here where we have enough time. It's uh, it's with Jason Chamakis and he was also there. He plays the flute. And so they actually make a really great duo with the flute. Oh, they were performing drum. together? Yeah. Yeah. It was really great. That's awesome. Where was that in Ottawa? It was at Carleton University. Oh, uh, really? I went there. Yeah. Like last weekend they had a elders and youth conference and they have like you know like um who was there the uh, Ovid Mercedri um Wabigijik Rice and it's like you know uh, each like each each uh each workshop was like a young person and an elder and so Wabigijik so Rice was like doing um he was talking about his book Midnight Sweat Lodge and he was paired with Albert Dumont and like you know there was always like they had some some Inuit youth and like they were paired with um like with an Inuit elder and because like Ottawa has like the largest Inuit population like in southern on southern Canada yeah really? yeah because like um it's really interesting too because uh, I had a friend from up north and he would always go to Ottawa to to kind of like to fly up north to fly up north because like the planes go go direct directly to Ottawa. Yeah, like That's so ITKs interesting. Are... I would have never thought that. Yeah, they have like a really big population. Like I have a, a couple of my girlfriends are dating some Inuit fellows. <laughs> 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 I think it's really funny. Yeah, that cracks me up because I feel like it always comes back to the boys. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, they're but they're really good to them. So yeah. it makes me good for them. <laughs> Very mm. interesting. All right, let's. Uh, I want to cram some a few more tunes in before mm-hmm. our time is up here. Let's. Uh, do you want to play another one from Robert Glado? Sure. Right. Okay, so we'll play that song uh, that I was just talking about mm-hmm. with uh, Jason Chamakis, and it's kind of he's paired with. Um, it's the flute and hand drum duo. All right. So we'll get to that right now. Hey. Uh, hey.
Okay, so if you're just turning in, tuning in, turning in, whatever, <laughs> waking uh, up, waking so. up <laughs> you are listening to Songs You Want Here on the Radio. I'm Jenna, and sitting with me here is Kara. Hello. And today we're talking all about red alliances and indigenous media, and Kara is sharing mm. just a portion of her excellent repertoire of tunes, native music. <laughs> yeah. So I guess we were just talking about this elders conference that you went to in Ottawa and the Trent elders, what is it, elders and traditional peoples gathering yeah. is coming up this month. For those of you who don't know, there's still, I think, a lot of planning to be done, a few kinks to be sorted out. But um, when we get all the info, we'll let you know yeah. via redalliances.com. Yeah, I think it's actually next weekend. Next weekend, yeah. yeah. It's from the 10th to the 11th and 12th. Or 9th, 10th, 11th. Yeah, so that's happening uh, right at... from the Grapevine. Grapevine. That's right <laughs> here at Trent University. So you guys should all go and check it out. And um, we're definitely looking to collaborate with a few things there and connect yeah. it to Red Alliances. And post some, some, some great stuff on Red Alliances. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's basically just the idea behind this website and for all of us is... Uh, you know, making connections and like building community and um, providing a place for these conversations to happen. Mm-hmm. All right, let's play a couple more tunes. Sounds good. All I, unfortunately, like uh, I was looking at it and I could either play a Powell song or a Key Sign C song. And I don't know if you guys are sick of it yet, but I'm certainly not. <laughs> I'm not so- sick of it. <laughs> I'm gonna. Uh, li- we're gonna listen to another Keith IMC. I actually, I was, I really love him. So, that's uh, yep. So we'll just play him. Lay it on me, Kara. It laid. <laughs> and uh, the government more or less make a deal with them to Christianize the Indian people, the dominant society. When they started building the schools, more or less like a prison, because uh, they built fences around the schools and they put guards to, you know, so that the parents wouldn't be able to see uh, the children or the children, you know, were kept there as like hostages. For we, for we, for we, for we fight for our, our land. All right. The eagles up there, the eagles, the eagles up there flying around, they are watching constantly to see that the sacred Man is preserved. We were put on reservation. We were put on reservation. We fight for our land. When I sit with my pen and pad in my cedar and sage, drop on my world and life through a pen as I turn this page of life being a native, but a stranger in your own land is something that I just don't understand. We were forced from our homes when our population diminished. They wanted to exterminate the Indian and make the Indian finish. We used to roam the plains freely, the mountains and the canyons, the desert swamps, coastlines to the eastern man landing. A Bible in one hand, a rifle in another, saying, Thou shalt. I believe what we do or die like your brother. Uh, forced religion, forced ways, forced out of land, but not forced without a fight, every woman and man. But then, women, elders, and children were massacred, protecting each other when the soldiers ambushed. While the warriors were away talking peace with the government, but that's how they were, they always had the broken cup. These are the tales of fears that you don't learn in school, but I felt the years these trails of tears run parallel to my dirt road. But it hurts though, knowing the struggle of my people carried over to this 2000 BC. But it's okay, cause we survived our clan. Nations and tribes, and together we need to stand as one. Cause we lasted through oppression and last stands. We fought too long and hard to die by our own hands. We run smooth like the wind and walk the spiritual path. And though minorities of minorities, we still know how to laugh. From genocide, boarding schools, third world reservation. May those who don't know start this reconciliation. Asian, 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 Asian. It has to depend on the government rations. Seven generations. Skinny cop. The generation of population issues. When the government took us away from our buffalo, they almost killed all of us. When the government, when the, when the government took us away from our buffalo, they almost killed all of us. Hey yo, it's 2000 years and it seems things haven't changed. It sucks that sometimes you read natives and it feels kind of strange. 1% the population, the invisible people. I can honestly say some places were not treated as an equal. And it pisses me off when I get on a stage and MC battle. And I'm witty with punchlines and the guys just babble. Make up fun of my origin, my being and my blood's racing. Dissing my culture, telling me to go back to the reservation. Calling me a drunk savage and everything that's degrading. Dancing around like a cartoon Indian while the crowd to rain. Cheering like idiots, and I'm tired of it being okay for you to make fun of my people. people. When I got there, why well, they took my clothes off and gave me issue clothes. We was in a military system. 
Everything we do is military. Then we cannot speak our language. They punish us for that. We got two things. Sometimes we get a whip. Yeah, with a black stick whip. And devastating. We cannot wear long hair. We can wear moccasins to take that away from us. From New York to L.A. in the middle, Indian country, yes. Oklahoma to the four directions, this is my story. When I sit and meditate and think of my ancestors, the battles, the wars, the pain and pressure. Until the day that people have recognition and acknowledgement of the native people of this land and how it feels to be native, then they'll understand. Until then, they'll just have lack of knowledge. For every cry, I will try a little harder. For every tear, I never fear and be a martyr. For every one, I'll stay strong and be the best. So ancestor, God bless, now rest. Uh. We have to learn this English. Inside the school, everything we do we gotta have a pass. So we go to the office and we ask for a pass. Whole bunch of us, then go way on the hills where nobody sees us, no one hears us. We take lunch with us. We sit in circle. We talk Indian. <laughs> That's how. I, today I'm still talking Indian. <laughs> I didn't lose it, <laughs> but my brother lost it all. So you, I think that was a pretty appropriate song to play, talking about the elders conference. Yeah, yeah, that's what I really like about uh, Keith IMC is that he like his music is so like it doesn't incorporate any of like the miso- like usual misogynistic tones that like are incorporated in so many like the top. 40 top 20 like rap artists that you hear like like Drake or Jay-Z you know it's not it's it's so like you know it's it's beautiful because it incorporates like you know a lot of like a lot of elder stories and then like you know the the first song we heard like you know was Phil Fontaine and then like you know the second song and then like you know in his in on like you know ch- youth youth narratives and it's so wonderful and how and to give it a beat and like and to make it a story it's so it's so beautiful and that's why I really like him a lot yeah even mm-hmm. just I mean how many songs we listen to today four from him yeah, and just yeah. so inclusive of um so many different elements of society and like touch yeah. he's touched on so many important issues mm. in like four songs so i'm stealing that cd from you after this <laughs> for sure for sure I'm, i'd be glad to burn you a copy <laughs> i'd be glad to um and like i don't know i really like like this last song it's really powerful because it talks about like uh like residential schools like the, and the legacy it brings like you know in the other like he was like um, we'd go up on the hills and we'd speak our language to each other and then like you know so I didn't lose it and then but he's like but my brother lost it all and then I kind of think about how that's kind of like reflected in communities today and how like a lot of the youth like are feeling so displaced and I have this like really like there are so many other like great indigenous artists in Canada like um, there's uh, a really great one for my community. His name is um, like he's name like he's referred to as Magic Touch, but his name is uh, Stephen Padwanquit, and he's really great. Like he does a lot of really great beats, and hopefully, like maybe we come if I can come on here again, like I can get some of his music and anytime. Yeah, yeah he's from Wiki. Yeah, he's from Wiki, and he's like um, he he like lives in out west, and he does his thing out there. And uh, they had a they had a conference in Wiki, like a youth conference, and it was called um, Ignite the Dream. And well, like one of my friends, Dina, she um, initiated the whole thing. She was uh, she's from Winnipeg, like her mom's from Wiki, and so she she just recently moved back, and she's half Dakota. And then she was talking to me, and she was saying like, you know, a lot of the youth in Wiki, like you know, they're just missing something. You know, they're not getting their teachings, and like, and I was like, yeah, you know, you're right, because like I was raised with my teachings, and I was raised like you know by my mom, who is very spiritual, and and like you know, like when when people died, like you know, they're always like, oh, they're gone to the happy hunting grounds there like you know and like and and like whatever like you know we'd always hear those stories and and stuff and that's what Dina was saying is missing in the youth and so she brought in a bunch of like you know a bunch of prominent uh like you know models and um what's that guy's name cool runnings um oh he's short cool runnings, cool runnings yeah uh I don't know I can't remember his name right now I can see his face anyways he's a really prominent uh 
a hip hop artist, indigenous hip hop artist, and he's like based out of from the West. And so he came, and everyone was really great to see him. And、uh, Joey Styles, so、right. yeah, yeah, Joey Styles was there, Magic Touch was there, and and Ombre Wood,、uh, Ombre Wood, and her partner、uh, Tosh, and like you know, it was really great for the youth. I was just looking at pictures yesterday, and like a lot of the youth, they pose for like you know photos, like wearing a lot of like local artists' clothing, and oh, it was it was so great. Like it was probably the best thing. Happened in Wiki for in a long time, and it was like so good for the youth. And like you know, they got some teachings from like you know a lot of the artists like who are who are making it in their field today, and and so it's it's really great. And like you know, that's some, something that I would like to show on Red Alliances. Like yeah, you know, totally. Like, this is what's going on here. Like you know, this is how like the grassroots. Like you know, the grassroots are they need it the most, and this is how they're getting like you know their teachings and like you know showing opportunities and like this is how things are com- affecting our communities. And that's the really exciting thing、um, about this project, and just being at Trent University in general, is there's such like inspiring and amazing people from like all over,、mm-hmm. all over the country, and、um, uh, yeah, from Wakumakong, like learning about what's going on there, and、um, yeah, like the grassroots activism. Liz sharing Liz, all of、yeah. her wonderful knowledge、yeah. with me every week as、Eugene's. I struggle through、uh. gym weight class. <laughs>、uh, yeah, so check out redalliances dot com. We're almost out of time here. We will put a list of all the songs we played today up、yes. on there this afternoon. So if you liked what you heard, which I'm sure you did, of course, Kara's excellent selection for us.、Uh, you can check it out on there, so you can、um, I don't know download it, buy some CDs,、uh, know a little bit more about what. Phenomenal music is out there. Yeah.、Um, stay tuned, cause Smooth Operators next, and we're gonna tell you all about what's going on in Peter over the next month, and Alders Gathering next、mm-hmm. week. Trent、Alders、University. Week. Check it we'll out. We'll have some more information about that next week. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kara. Come back、oh, anytime. No problem. Thank you for having me. Miigwech. Chimiigwech. Chimiigwech. Baba pi. Bama pigo amen. That was like the extent of my Ojibwe <laughs> after four months. All right, so it's a lot. Give us a song to go with. Sure. Which one is the ugliest monument? The people say that it's a symbol of the country, but I think the presidents up there they took Indians and made them slaves and took their land away and put them on reservations. Give them white society on the radio. Watch out, 'cause here we are.